Um, I'm very happy to bring a very uplifting program this morning um, to everybody in these weird times that we're living in. Um, the Baltimore Leadership School for Young Women was founded by Brenda Brown Reaver in 2008 in partnership with the Baltimore City School System. This is a very unique school for Baltimore City and um, it has an incredibly um, uplifting and very positive uh, program for its students that um, amazingly enough have two award-winning teams, one a STEM team for um, science and technology and and, um, and, and math and um, engineering, and one a STEP team that is a dance team that has an incredible movie made about its um, terrific winnings of, of dancing. Um, the school was officially open in 2009 and um, is in a facility in a building at Franklin and Park Avenues. Um, it entertains grades six to 12 and um, they are graduating um, college bound students, which is fabulous. Um, I'm going to introduce this morning the executive, um, the chief executive officer, Siobhan Hall Smith, who will speak to us. Um, I asked for her CV uh, several days ago. It is three pages long. She's an incredibly accomplished woman, and we are very, very happy to have her speak to us today. She has an advanced certificate in education and administration from the College of St. Rose. She has a master's um, or certificate in nonprofit management from the Columbia School of Business. She has a master's in secondary education from the Brooklyn College, um, which is the City of New York Graduate Honors Program. And she's got a BA from Spelman College in political science and sociology. Before she was the chief executive officer of the Baltimore Leadership School for Young Women, she was its principal from 2015 to 18 and is now in the executive position. And um, I am pleased and honored and very excited um, to bring you a program by Siobhan Hall Smith. Thank you. Good morning, ladies. Uh, please let me know if you can hear me. Uh, okay, good. I see some thumbs up. So that is that is good. And it's so good to be here. Um, I am honored to see uh, some familiar faces. Uh, uh, Eileen Tui, she um, is invaluable, both personally and professionally. Uh, when I transitioned into this role uh, from the principalship, she um, I'll just say that God sent her at the right time. And so for that, Eileen, I am forever, forever grateful. Um, and I thank you for that. And uh, so ladies, we're going to jump in and uh, just have a talk about the work that we are doing at the Baltimore Leadership School for Young Women, uh, how we are continuing, excuse me, to move our work and our girls forward uh, and most importantly, how we are continuing to actualize our mission even now. Uh, so uh, we are going to, uh, we're going to jump in. And then uh, when we are done, Laura and Emily, I believe that, um, will we have time for Q&A afterwards? Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So as we shared, we are the Baltimore Leadership School for Young People. And our school was founded in 2008 in accepting our first uh, cohort of sixth graders in 2009. And each year uh, through 2016, the school added another grade until we were fully grown during the 2015-16 school year. We are a Baltimore City public charter school. And what that means is that our students are accepted by lottery. And so when we say lottery, we have a, um, a, a bingo crank. So uh, for those of you who are familiar with, uh, with bingo, we put all students 
who applied to our school in fifth grade to attend in the sixth grade. We put their names in this uh, gold bingo plank and the girls are selected by lottery. So they're beyond the initial application just to submit their names. There is no other entrance criteria. Uh, it is only asked that you live within the Baltimore city limits. The only preference that is given is to students who are siblings of a student who currently attends or if they are the sibling now of an alumni. So as I've shared, we uh, began our school in 2009 and in 2016, that first group, uh, you're right, uh, Laura, if you can go to the next slide, that first sure. group Apologies. of, um, I'm sorry, we can just go back one slide, that first group of, <laughs> That first group of sixth graders uh, in 2016, they were no longer cute little girls. They were amazing young women who, graduate, who were graduating from high school and all of whom had been accepted into college. And so when we thought about our mission at that time to ensure that our girls were successful in college and in life and to ensure that we had a strong school culture with innovative teaching practices that really supported the development of the whole girl, we were excited to say that we had now reached that milestone in 2016. Little did we know that uh, after 2016, when we got that first cohort of young women, all of whom had been accepted into the college or university of their choice, our school had launched into a very different phase of our existence. And that phase was the now, what we call the now what phase. So we had gotten through startup, but now these wonderful young women, many of whom were first generation college students, we had to ask ourselves, how do we just leave a seven year commitment? So they had been with us for seven years. Uh, their families believed in us enough to share their daughters with us for seven years. And we wanted to honor that seven year investment. So I say honor the seven year investment. They call us the helicopter school with the helicopter principal. Uh, and we sometimes meet in the middle. So what that turned into as we were continuing to support the whole girl or the whole young woman was to ensure that the same values and vision that we had for them uh, in sixth grade, when they were going to, when we were preparing them for college, excuse me, we wanted to make sure that they had those same skills and that same level of support. So in our second decade, we now have placed more of an emphasis on alumni support in addition to the college preparatory curriculum. Uh, so Laura, we can go to the next slide, please. And so now that we're in our second decade, I wanted to highlight a few of our bright spots. So in addition to ensuring that every single one of our girls who have graduated from Bliss, they have all been accepted into college, including our class of 2021. And we also want to mention that this year's highlight was that two of our students were accepted into Northeastern University and received full scholarships. The full scholarships, that is important to us because we know that without meeting financial need, although girls are accepted into the college or university of their choice, getting there and staying there becomes more of a challenge. In addition, our seventh graders, uh, Many of you may have seen the news story. Our seventh graders, uh, while in virtual learning, they were working with their science teacher, Ms. Reyes, to create uh, a solution to students who suffered from asthma, particularly girls. And many of our girls who suffer from asthma are afraid to use their inhaler in public. So they wanted to find a way that they could carry their inhalers it not be so noticeable because we know at this age in the seventh grade, they definitely don't want to stand. They definitely do not want to stand out. 
So how could they continue to fit in with their peers while ensuring that their health needs were met? So they came up with an idea to use a hair scrunchie and in that hair scrunchie, it would be your inhaler. So no one would ever know that what you were wearing on your wrist or possibly in your hair uh, has something more valuable in that being their inhaler. So with that idea, they entered a national science competition, the Samsung Saw for Tomorrow Challenge, and they are now in the semifinal round of the competition. All right, um, everyone come off mute. Come off mute, come off mute. Okay, so um, unfortunately, I'm sorry to have to give you all this news, but um, the Samsung Sulfur Tomorrow contest emailed me yesterday and we're semi-finalists and we won $15,000 for the school. Mm. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. The, oh, oh my gosh. I thought that, I thought it was about to be like bad news. <laughs> that was bad news while we were getting accepted or something. Ms. Reyes, that was so messed up. You, my heart literally dropped. <laughs> no, yeah, like, it, you did all that hard work. All in Wednesdays. Oh, <laughs> Oh, my wow. face, like, I couldn't make a face because the meeting was being recorded, but I was so sad, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right. Well, I just wanted to be the first to tell you all that really great news. Um, I'm going to share it with the rest of the school as well um, and tell them, like, who was involved in all of that. But so if people just say things to you throughout the day, just know that that's why. Um, I'm really, really proud of each and every one of you. You put so much hard work into this, and I know you put in a lot of extra time that you didn't need to outside of class. Um, but remember, this is just our first step because now we actually have to do the thing. So we're going to make our product. We're going to try to be finalists and win $65,000 for the school. So you, in that video, you saw Ms. Reyes, our science teacher, uh, really sharing the excitement with the girls because they have been working on this assignment remotely. And so for them to advance to the semifinal round of a national competition and being the only school from Maryland selected for that honor, the girls are extremely excited. So they're actually working on the prototype now for, uh, for their inhaler apparatus. So even in this time, the values that we hold dear at our school uh, from college and career preparedness, uh, we can say here to ensuring that our students at all levels experience a STEM education. It is equally important that our girls continued to support the community through leadership and service. So our 11th and 12th graders, they wrote a proposal and then ultimately received a grant from an organization known as Party at the Mailbox. So right before the election, they were not old enough to vote, but they wanted to be at a place where they could help others in Baltimore City in accessing the vote and having more information about the voter, part the voter process, not just in Baltimore City, but on the state and national level. So together, they, uh, they rented tables and chairs and prepared snack bags. And on election day, they actually gave snack bags, drinks, and provided seats for uh, the elderly while they were waiting online to vote. So they were very excited about that. Uh, and they made sure that everyone knew the essentials of voting. And so they called it the party at the mailbox, uh, bliss simplifying the vote, and they were able to share what they had learned in their history and civics classes with those who were old enough to vote and also provided a small snack and just a, a way to make them feel comfortable while they were waiting on some pretty long lines to cast their ballots.
And as I've shared, 100% of our Bliss graduates continue to be accepted to colleges and universities around the country. So since 2016, these are a few of the colleges where our girls have been accepted. And our girls, we ensure that we match them to the college that meets their needs. And it's important for us when they leave Bliss that they are going to a college where they will not only be supported as women, but also supported to, to take, excuse me, academic, social, and leadership risk that they may not have considered. So for some, the colleges may be large, you know, have large campuses such as University of Maryland. But for others, they may choose a smaller campus to make their mark in the world. And as I've shared, because our school is now in its second decade, we knew that we needed to launch a new strategic plan. So in a pandemic, we really had to identify what does Bliss need to launch us successfully into our second decade of serving girls and their families. So we knew that we wanted to keep sure that we were uh, providing college access to every single one of our graduates as demonstrated through our 100% college acceptance. But we knew that we needed to move the needle even further. And what that looks like and sounds like for us is that now we are focusing on 75% of our alumni will graduate from four year colleges. So we know that many may start at two year colleges, but we want to ensure that they will ultimately have a four year degree, a, excuse me, a degree from a four year uh, university. We also want to uh, continue to support our alumni in being leaders in their professional fields and in their communities. And we know that leadership takes on many different looks. It can be an academic leader. It can be a leader supporting mental and social and emotional health. It can be a physical leader. It can be leading in your society or simply leading yourself and encouraging others to do the same. But more so than anything else, we wanted to ensure that Bliss is a best in class college preparatory school and so what you will see here is that we not only are striving to be a best in class public school or a best in class school in Baltimore or a best in class school in Maryland, we simply want to be the best possible all girls school that there is, okay? And the ways that we will reach these goals, we really had to look at our academic program to ensure that beginning in sixth grade, we continue to make sure that the curricular choices that we make are both rigorous and at a place where they are meeting students' needs. So making sure that students are always engaged in what we call a productive struggle. We also recognize that if we are to achieve these goals, we definitely have to invest in the adults that serve the girls. Uh, my mentor has a statement that has stayed with me for many, many years. And he reminds me, well, Siobhan, if you don't feed the teachers, they will eat the children. And so with that in mind, we, uh, this was one of our, our guiding forces as we were thinking about, if we are to serve girls well, we have to serve uh, the adults that serve them. Then we had to look at our whole girl approach. And we didn't want to just have the whole girl approach on an island by itself, but how do we incorporate educating women to be leaders in all parts of our school? So how does it show up in the approach that we use for math instruction? Are we looking at best practices for how girls learn math in middle and high school? When we think about history and literature, are we sharing with our girls the contributions that women have made to the history of the United States, the history of our world, and the history of Baltimore. And when we think about 
how do we ensure that when we are long gone from bliss, uh, many decades from now, that the systems that we have put in place are not only repeatable, but they are sustainable. We don't want to invest this into an institution for it to go away when a leader or when a teacher leaves. But beyond these things, we had to make sure that what was driving our decision-making was definitely our girls first, followed by strong data, both quantitative and qualitative, and making sure that our school was financially sustainable. Okay. So why does Bliss need philanthropy? So, so often people, you know, people will ask, well, Siobhan, it is a public school and you're receiving your per pupil allocation. And we say, yes, you're right. But we know that if we are expected to have the same outcomes as an independent day school here in Baltimore City, uh, and their tuition is $35,000 a year. Our per pupil allocation this year was roughly about $9,300 for uh, the current school year. So we know that there is a difference of more than $25,000 per student. So with that in mind, we had to say, how do we ensure that our girls have what many people believe are extras but we so often say are essentials if we are going to have the same outcomes. And that's when philanthropy comes in. So some of our ways that philanthropy, particularly the Baltimore Women's Giving Circle have supported our mission and our vision was through your philanthropic support. And the most tangible way that your support has helped us has definitely been when we have been at a place where we have been able to take students in their 12th grade year to what we call their first look. And it is the first time when they go to their first choice college, wherever that first choice college may be. So I can't say as a student in Baltimore that I really want to go to Spelman College in Atlanta if I've never seen it. Right, So there's something about being on a campus and seeing the campus that really makes the student and their family make a decision about where they will spend their next four years. So through your support, we have been able to do that. Another huge way that the support from the Baltimore Women's Giving Circle has helped us has definitely been with our alumni. This year, many of our alumni who are on campuses across the, across the nation, in March, their campuses closed and many of them had to come back to Baltimore, but families financially were not in a place where they could immediately buy plane tickets or bus tickets, and I apologize, I went to the next slide. They could immediately go and buy plane tickets or bus tickets. So with support from the Baltimore Women's Giving Circle, we were able to provide that alumni gap funding to provide uh, plane tickets, bus tickets, and some of those things that sometimes we take for granted. One of the simplest things were totes, right? Because everyone wasn't bringing everything back home, but they needed to put things in Rubbermaid totes so they could go into uh, various storage facilities in their college towns. Another piece has been our dual enrollment program with Baltimore City Community College and the University of Baltimore. So this year, with support from the Baltimore Women's Giving Circle for the past few years, we have been able to support our students in taking classes for college credit. At both Baltimore City Community College. So calculus is a math course that is a higher level math class and it is something that we have worked towards since 2015. And this semester we have our first cohort of students who are earning college credit for calculus. So that is only possible, that was possible in part due to the support from, from you. And although it may seem small, but each year we have students and families 
that cannot afford the uniforms that we ask our girls to wear. We ask our girls to wear bold purple and a beautiful, beautiful plaid skirt or gray pants. However, those uniform items are not sold in traditional uniform stores, nor are there district vouchers for families to purchase our uniforms. So we had to come up with a way that families would be able to access the uniform and it not present a financial burden on the family. So with a portion of the funding, we were also able to start a uniform relief fund for families who at any point during the school year needed support. It could have been at the beginning of the school year. We have had families who were displaced from their homes and girls having to leave and not being able to take uniforms with them when they had to leave. We've had fires. And so with the support, families were able to come to the school. We had the additional funding to replace the uniforms or to purchase first time uniforms so that there was no difference in what girls were wearing in class and families did not have to bear that financial burden alone. Uh, so I'm going to stop here with the presentation portion. And uh, Laura, are we at a place where we can start the Q&A? Okay. And one more piece, uh, Tamara Hamilton, uh, she is one of our students that benefited from the first look visit that was sponsored by the Baltimore Women's Giving Circle. So Tamara is now a senior at Philander Smith College in Little Rock, Arkansas. She received a full scholarship. And interestingly enough, she is majoring in math education. So when she graduates, she is looking to become a math teacher. She is already accepted into graduate school. And we are pleading with her to come back to Baltimore to teach, but she has absolutely fallen in love with Arkansas and New Orleans. So uh, I think we may have a little bit of a battle on our hands, but uh, it is amazing to see that what for her, what was the game changer was being able to go to Little Rock to see the campus. When she saw it for her, that was what helped her to make her decision. And she was only able to see it through the funding that this group has provided. So if you just wanna take a moment, she um, couldn't be here with us today, but did provide a quote on how your funding has supported her on her journey.